Hello everybody and welcome back. It has been a long time since my last video, like a really long time. So I'll just get to it. Let's keep this one short and sweet. What are we going after tonight? Well, let's start off with our equipment, right? I've got the RC8 and the reason why this is now on the telescope mount instead of my 10 inch Newtonian is because we have just finished the other night our group collaboration project with entering in this space, Steven, as well as Colorado Astro Tommy with our, I believe it's over 80 hours. I don't know the exact count just yet, but I know we've got 80 hours or more worth of imaging data that we're integrating right now. And we've already taken a couple stabs at the processing, but I think we're gonna keep working on it and see what other techniques we can develop. But I've got the RC8 out tonight. Why? Because it's galaxy season. So what better way to go hunting for galaxies than with a long focal length telescope, even though it has two inches less aperture than the 10 inch Newtonian, it's also got 600 millimeters additional focal length with that paired with my ASI 2600 mm, as well as my OAG and just my moonlight focuser and everything else that we have on here. The newest thing that I want to bring to your attention is this gizmo up here. Now I haven't done a video on this and I really need to, but this is the Wander Astro V3 flat panel cover. So what does that actually mean? So if you're an astrophotographer, you know exactly what this can do. Instead of having to put t-shirts on this and then put a tracing board on top of that and then shoot manual flats, while I'm still asleep, this will do it for me. Within Nina, I will set this up to automatically open when it becomes dark enough outside. And then when it becomes too light outside in the morning over here to the east, this will close on its own and then it will turn on the lights and then it will shoot my flats for me. Now I have trained my flats inside of Nina, which is very beneficial because they have a trained flats function or feature within the advanced sequencer. Now you can actually find that in my last video. So head over to it to check that out. So later tonight, this will start up and I have been very lucky so far Tonight, tomorrow night, and the following are all forecasted to be, well, clearer than this, right? So this is this is okay, I can image through this, but it's supposed to be even clearer than this. We're supposed to have absolutely clear skies because last night we had a really big cold front move through associated with some thunderstorms, um, some severe thunderstorms in areas. And even later on last night, that same storm went through other areas of Missouri um, where tornadoes actually touched down usually after an event like that we usually have a couple nights of just absolutely clear skies so my condolences to those that were impacted by it but at the same time um, it does afford me the availability now to have a few nights to gather some data all right guys so where is it i'm going to be imaging so you are currently looking to my north so we're going to be looking over here to the east later on this evening and then all the way over to the west and i'll show you that here in stellarium right now and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be tracking one single galaxy the entire evening and we will finish up just before six in the morning um, according to nina all right guys so if you're curious what galaxy we're going to be imaging let's get to it it's m51 or the whirlpool galaxy now this galaxy is accompanied by ngc 5195 which is a small yellowish galaxy that's actually passing behind M51. Now with this second galaxy, a lot of people believe that they're actually colliding, which is maybe um, a misconception. What's happening is, is they are interacting with each other, but that galaxy is actually behind M51. You have to remember space is three dimensions, right? So when we look at it in two dimensions, it looks like they're, they're slamming each other, but what's happening is it's just slightly behind it and it's passing behind. They are interacting though. Gravity is pulling on each of them accordingly. So now I did specify that we're gonna be imaging this target. So let's talk about how we're gonna image it. I'm gonna be using LRGB and hydrogen because this galaxy is so large, relatively speaking, in comparison to other galaxies that we could image, there is an opportunity to pick up an immense amount of hydrogen alpha emission line with my three nanometer HA filter. And some of you might be asking, what does that actually mean? Well, emission nebulae are typically red in space. That's how they actually appear. So what I'll do is I'll do my typical LRGB imaging and then I'm gonna lace it with this hydrogen data. And that way these nebulas really pop. Now with this galaxy, the awesome part is, is 
a lot of people who shoot enough exposure time, especially with that red filter, can get these emission nebulae without the hydrogen filter. But once we put them together, it's gonna make them pop just that much more. Right, guys so it is actually much colder out here than i maybe make it seem it's only in the 40s it's very windy and i'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt yes i might be crazy but it is what it is i'm just excited to have this set up out here so with that guys thank you for joining tonight be sure to let me know what you think of this final image in just a minute in the comments below be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit that like button if you do like this content it helps me get visibility out here so with that, guys, clear skies, thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.